For now, we're talking about relationships and fights. How would you describe the way you and your partner fight? Because all couples will, it's just inevitable. Um, but what, do, what is important is, I, as the experts have said for quite a while, is how you fight. That determines whether or not you go the distance and whether or not it's good for you. And joining us for this conversation is uh, Paula Quincy, relationship expert with us uh, this afternoon. And we're taking your calls. I'm really curious about how you would characterize, you know, your um, your temperament during a fight. Good afternoon, uh, Paula. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi there. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Um, so there's so much to say because fights are inevitable. They are part and parcel of just human interaction. And uh, one of my colleagues earlier on said they're conflict averse. Where is that? Where do we locate that uh, in, in relation to fights, the need for a fight and how we relate with each other? Is it a tactic? Is it a strategy? It's, it's a bit of both. And we, we learn it in childhood. Um, the first seven years of a child's life is where our emotional foundation is formed. And this is where we learn from our primary caregivers, which is in most cases is our parents, how to deal with emotions, express emotions, deal with conflict, be vulnerable, um, trust, open up, be affectionate, all of those things. We learn those skills at a very young age. And depending on the environment that we're exposed to and how we experience and, and, and deal with conflict is learned at that stage. And this is where our conflict management skills or coping mechanisms um, stem from. So generally, we see two kinds of conflict management styles, a minimizer and a maximizer. So the minimizer is the, are those that don't like conflict or confrontation, so they avoid it. In other words, they withdraw from conflict or, or emotional situations. And then the maximizers are those that come out and, and, and are defensive and reactive or attacking to, to defend themselves against conflict situations. Oh, so interesting. I've never heard of the two terms and potentially maybe how we contribute to that. So what is a healthy fight and what is an unhealthy fight? Well, as you mentioned earlier, you know, couples are going to fight. In fact, any two people that are in the same space are going to have conflict. And conflict is simply, it can be as simple as a disagreement, a different view, a different opinion. And as a couple, being two unique individuals with different upbringings and, and perspectives and views, you're going to have conflict. So healthy conflict or how you deal with it is that you do it in, in first of all, a respectful way. So not being to toxic like swearing at each other, calling each other all the names under the sun, being, being physical or violent towards each other. And it's really about how, how do we find a middle ground where both our needs can be met and that we can move forward in this situation, finding a solution that works for both of us. Mm. So, Paula, is it true that what is at the heart of fights between couples is usually the same things? Yes, there are ten generally a couple of same issues that keep coming up time and time again that couples will fight or mm -hmm. argue about. But it's it's what's underneath those issues. And underneath those issues, our emotional needs are not being met in some way, form or shape. I'm not feeling appreciated. I'm not feeling valued. I'm not feeling heard. I'm not feeling respected. I'm feeling invisible. In other words, I'm not feeling a priority in your life. And that's the source of where the conflict comes from and, and what we need to resolve. Mm, so is that really often at the, at the heart of it? But we struggle to say that it presents in another way often. Absolutely. Um, often we're unaware of what's lying underneath the issue because, you know, as human mm. beings, we're tangible and we tend to focus on the, on the object of our frustration or the situation. So, for example, we'll say things like, well, you never do this or you always do this. So, for example, you're always working. Mm. You, you know, you're never making time for, for me or us as a family. And, and underlying that is I, I'm craving your attention. I want to feel like I'm a priority in your life. I want to feel important. I want time with you. Wow. You know, you mentioned something that is a little bit of a, a peeve. Um, <laughs> this, speaking in absolutes, you always, you never. 
And I tend to respond with, oh, prone to exaggeration much because <laughs> surely it cannot be that you always, I always think that's really not a fair assessment. It's already not fighting fair. Yeah, and we do. You know, when, when, we've, when we're feeling hurt, we lash out and we lash out in ways that is to try and get a reaction from our partner but we do it in a way that is can be hurtful. And that's when we get reactive and defensive with each other and we can get stuck in that space and not move forward. Yes, or oh, you always, you never. How do we train ourselves out of things such as that, out of using insults, out of character assassinations? So I think first and foremost is at a very basic human level, how do we respect each other as human beings? Because that's what we are, first and foremost, before we are lovers, mothers, fathers, partners, etc. So basic human respect. And this is where relationship boundaries and relationship deal breakers can come into play here. Secondly is self-awareness. What am I feeling right now? And, and, And is it my stuff? Is it something that I'm projecting that is potentially, we call it childhood wounding, so it comes from childhood, and it's playing out in my relationship? Or is it something that's re- that my partner's really doing that is affecting me? And often it can be a combination of both. Mm, mm. I remember one psychologist saying, um, if you're in, well, if you're fighting with your partner, you should go away and look at how you contributed. So instead of counting all the things that you feel aggrieved about, look at your contribution and you're likely to come up with quite a list. uh, And often that brings down the tempers because you get to see how you played a part, you know, in ratcheting up the tensions, in contributing to a hurtful situation. Quite correct. And often what I do in the work when I'm working with couples, I'll say, right, draw me up your list of frustrations that you have with each other. But before we share those lists, I want you to write a solution opposite each frustration. So, for example, you're always at work. And what I would like or need from you instead is this. And how I can co-create that is with this. And it's because both couples or both partners are equally accountable and responsible for building and growing and keeping their relationship safe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so we're taking calls, by the way. That's the voice of Paula Quincy, relationship expert. And we're talking about how we fight and uh, how do you fight? How do you conduct yourself in a fight? Uh, and I'm sure you can point to fights that were hurtful, that were quite heated, um, and those perhaps that were quite productive. There are clear differences in the outline that Paula gave us a little bit earlier on. So 11 for your SMSs, your WhatsApps and voice notes on 072-702-1702. Or maybe you're the person who leans on, who's quick to use insults, who's quick to, char- to, to use character assassinations towards the other, which can be very hurtful. There's also the aftermath to follow that we'll discuss in a moment. Some of your messages on WhatsApp one says, I don't care. You want to fight? I shut up and I just block you on WhatsApp. I have no time for games. Life is too short. That's Sandile in Pimville. Do we grow that way, Paula? Do our relationships uh, get better when we don't engage? Um, Or is Sandile perhaps saying that it is the way in which this is done that he shuts down, that he just that he shuts it out to avoid going there, would rather stay on the side that uh, uh, is, it, it does not feature maybe what is, what is playing out, but maybe unhealthy. So it can be a combination of both. And this is often where, you know, as an individual, but as a couple, it's to choose your battles wisely. So some things may not be worth fighting and arguing and making a big thing of. Um, You know, you're never going to agree on everything 100%. And so sometimes, you know, it's okay to agree to disagree on that, but you can still do it respectfully. If you feel that your partner is becoming volatile or insulting and you don't want to engage on that level, some people respond by shutting down and not engaging as a way of blocking that person and and not you know tolerating that kind of behavior. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they are finding a way to work through it and deal with it. And this is where couples mm-hmm. can equip themselves with very key skills on how to communicate effectively, to really listen and hear where their partner's coming from, to step in the middle of the space where the relationship is 
and find a way forward together. And this is often where people talk about compromise. And I, yeah. I don't like using the word compromise because it has a negative connotation attached to it. I've got to give in or give up something to get something. I prefer to use the word contribution. What contribution am I willing to make to my relationship and my partner? Because I value it. I value us and I want us to grow together. Mm. Let's hear from Paul. Paul's given us a call from Protea Glenn. Hello, Paul. Hello, Adeline. How are you? Good, and you? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, from my side, I think um, to avoid so many issues, whenever, for instance, if my partner and I have got a problem, I think for some time, it's better for us to, to just keep quiet, maybe to I'd, I'd say for me, I keep a bit of detail for 30 minutes, then after that I'll appreciate that I you find all the problems and that's when I'll take that the conversation and forgive each other. Mm. And does that work yeah. for you, Paul, to have that cool off period yeah, before you? It does. Sometimes, you know, I just need some jokes on her, then she smiles. So whenever she smiles, then I know her. Uh, mm-hmm. Things are okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And does she also reach out to break the ice, or are you always the one uh, breaking the ice? No, basically, yeah, she is the one. Basically, yeah. Okay. The one, yeah. All right. Paul, thank you for that. Even some, even some few hours ago, she was, she, you know, if a lady is angry, you can just be by the mouth and the face. Then I was like, hey, you, you start me now. Don't make me feel like I'm your friend. So then now I hit the, the bump, then she was mine, then I know I, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paul, as long as it's all harmless play. Thank you for the call. So he seems to know how to bring back that smile. Uh, but he also made an important point about having that time away from the issue. Yeah, you know, it does help if, if, um, if a situation is getting out of control, if it's getting heated, it, it is okay to put a pause on the conversation and give each other some time to cool down, to reflect and think about what's being shared, but then make sure that you come back at another time to, to pick up the conversation and perhaps approach it in a different way that finds a way forward and a resolution for both of you. Mm, so can we talk about what happened yesterday? Yes. That sort of thing, like when you're both, uh, I guess, in a better space. Tepo's calling us from Johannesburg South. Hi, Tepo. Hi, Aza. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. Um, Aza, obviously, I also have the same issue with my partner. Mm. So usually what I hate the most um, in my case when we fight is, um, let's say, for instance, he owns the two cars that we're driving. And I want to get away from the situation. Let's say, for instance, the um, argument is so he said to an extent that, you know what, I feel um, I just need to maybe go to the nearest restaurant, maybe sit there and um, think and all of those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And you'll go like, um, why are you taking my car, leave my car and stuff like that? So I feel like they're bringing material issues into the relationship. So I'm obviously contributing other ways into the relationship, but it's just that for now, the two cars that we're driving, um, it's uh, one of uh, his and stuff like that. And then the other part is maybe uh, we're fighting about something and we end up um, or bringing other issues like, uh, oh, this thing happened last year mm. and we're repeating the same thing. You will never change. You feel this person and stuff like that. And I think um, this is the person that we engaged with. And then I'm like, uh, but why are you bringing things um, last year or year before last or four years ago when we got involved and stuff like that? Mm. And we just move forward and focus on the current issue. Like it could be the smallest thing. Say, for instance, um, I was supposed to be back home by, or I had agreed to be back home by five and I'm home by six. And it's like you never keep time. You've done it so many times. You've done it last year, and you don't take me seriously because other things are so important that you even forget about me. So those are the type of things that I constantly have to deal with, and um, it kills even the the relationship and how one feels and the yeah. rejecting the other person. I feel um, sometimes yes. when you bring the material stuff and you bring old stuff and you bring all these things at the same time. Mm. So, but, yeah. Paul, how do you advise? he should approach this uh, as he says they're engaged and this material the materials get thrown in his face so he gets deprived of using things that belong to the partner which is really not right 
Yeah, so it, I would suggest that you, you sit down with your partner and ask her, you know, what is it about these things? What is it about you not wanting me to use these things? You know, there's, there's got to be some real concern or issue underneath there. And to find out what that fear or issue is, is and then how, how do you address it in a way that gives that person a sense of comfort or a, a sense of, you know, um, safety and security in the relationship. Um, you know, um, and then also I would suggest, you know, often when things come up from three, four years ago, we call it the kitchen sink. Everything is in the kitchen sink is from swept up from under the carpet. It's generally because something hasn't been resolved. It ha there hasn't been closure on it. And so it's still sitting with that person and it's festering with them. Mm, so as you said, the underlying, the emotion behind uh, the fight is still not addressed. Absolutely. And that the time issue, often what underlies that is I can't rely on you and I can't depend on you because when you say something, you, don't, you, you break your promise to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I also think that for someone to throw in and say to you that you can't use the car, that's really, I wouldn't, I, I, I imagine that psychologically you don't really feel safe, um, even beyond the fight, because if it's said as something you can share that you have access to, but then the condition changes when you have a fight, uh, you should address that. You should address that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think uh, like it's, uh, something as simple, um, I was listening to your guest either or when they're saying there could be, um, say for instance, if let's say for instance we're having a heated fight or a heated argument for instance, and I want to get away from the argument and I use one of the cars that we're driving um, at home. If he doesn't want me to leave, um, I think um, instead of saying don't use the car, that's my car or something like that, um, why are you using the car or something, I always use the car. But if you want me to rather be present and try to resolve the issues, it could easily be, you know, rather don't go and stay so that yes. can resolve the mm -hmm. issue as yes. opposed to um, throwing the material thing to say, no, that's my car, leave mm -hmm. the keys. If you want to go, just get out and leave the keys. That's a good like point, that. yes. Because I'm one of those, like, um, obviously we are in a relationship, but we've been together for quite some time. We fight about things. We both contribute equally. It's just that in that case or mm -hmm. that instance, um, that is his material or um, object or something like that. I can't go back Lena, and say, oh, when are you using this? And stuff it's like my that. place. Like that. Yes, it gets quite stuff. petty. Yes. Tepo, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your Thanks call. Um, and next we go to Tasmin. Hello, Tasmin. Hi, it's Anya. Great show. Welcome. I just thought because on a lighter note, I was evaluating who's the maximizing, who's the minimizing my marriage. Okay. <laughs> Evidently, I'm I'm the maximizer, my husband's the minimizer, and it's, it's interesting because we never really have any um, fights as in like, um, like hurtful fights or screaming fights because we don't, like, I think it's, you know, it's, a, it's a good balance we have, but the frustration for me is because I'm a maximizer mm -hmm. and he's a minimizer, it's like, I want to have it all out, late out, he's the <laughs> one who's like listening and maybe stay here and there and then say nothing and the saying nothing kills me. The next day I will still be like, but I feel like this is not resolved. And he's like, can you calm down? And then we'll talk about it. So I suppose it helps to have that. Yeah. It's interesting yeah. with my kids, um, um I have it, it's interesting dynamics because you know, you see how they play it out and how they actually mm. um, solve the problem. So often when they want to physically get a free little voice and when they want to actually get feisty with each other and physically want to hit each other and obviously you as a parent break it, I tell them, right, let's take time out, go in your room, both of you must now discuss what the problem is and once you have discussed with some of the solution, hug each other and then we can come out of the room. Mm. Otherwise, allowed to come out of the room. Mm. That's a good lesson for yeah. them to speak. To speak. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I resonate with that as well. I'm very direct because I want us to say it, say whatever is hanging in the air, you know. So, uh, and I think it's important that we also know the role that we play as she was finding herself there. Um, there is a another call. Let's go to the lines with Brandon before we come back to the voice notes and WhatsApps. Hi, Brandon. Hi, hi. Um, I've got just a question for your um, guest. You know, often like it's it, it's not the the content that that problem in an argument. You know, arguments are really 
um, very, very useful. But often, you know, like how um, entitled you feel in, in, in a relationship. Um, you know, what, what can't you do in the way that you talk to someone? If you're correct, even if you're right, yes. that doesn't give you the, the, the excuse to, to abuse that person or treat them badly. So like, what, are the, what do you think the ground rules are in terms of communication? Yes. In, in an argument. Yes, so setting them jointly together. Brandon, uh, a really yeah. good point. Thank you. Brandon in Auckland Park. Um, Paula? Yeah, absolutely. And this is often where I encourage couples to sit down and have that conversation very early in their relationship to set the parameters around what are the deal breakers and what are the boundaries in terms of how we will be towards each other, how we will treat each other. Um, how, and, and not only when we are together, but also when we are not with each other as well, so that they, we're on the same page and we know exactly where we stand with each other. And one of those um, discussions is around how we will deal with conflict and, and resolve it. Mm-hmm. So we can say that a deal breaker or something that will really put things in jeopardy is if you lift a hand, for instance, if you if you insult me, if you swear at me, we could be quite... Uh, direct and quite specific about what we're willing to tolerate, Absolutely. even in a fight. Absolutely. And if you've discussed and agreed this on upfront, that this is how we will conduct our relationship, um, at any point you can hold each other accountable to say, hey, we agreed on this and you're slipping here. Or, hey, remember we agreed on this that we wouldn't do this. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, and calling each other out on our behavior because we can do that as long as we do it respectfully and in a way that is loving and, and, and nurturing and grows and lifts each other up and not pulls each other down. Yes. Um, our, what about agreeing that we don't fight in public, that we wait till we get home, till it's just the two of us? Because, you know, that can happen too. Where it, 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 something happens and the next thing you're in the throes of a fight in front of people. Absolutely. That can definitely be one of the ground rules that you've established in your relationship. And, and then how do you agree to deal with it? That if you are in a public space and something has happened that's um, got one of you in a, in a tiff or a foul mood, that you don't spoil it for your partner and everyone else, that you manage to still go about your business and be respectful, but then address it when you get home. Yeah. Uh, let's take a listen to this voice note. Hi, Azania. It's Temba from Team Isa. Um, I want to, your guest to just make me to understand when I would have an argument with my wife, she's always the one who would want to fix the problem right there, right now. And I'm more of, okay, close these kids. Let's wait for them to sleep. Then we'll speak. She's more of a pusher. And sometimes if the argument would get heated, I prefer to go out and steam off and she would pull me and say, hey, you're not going anywhere. We need to fix this. How can we, we work can with it best for going course. forward? So uh, different styles, different approaches there. How, so it's back to what Brendan just called about, laying down the ground rules, the rules of engagement. Absolutely. And, you know, it's also to understand that when you – that with your conflict management styles, how and why you approach conflict the way you do. So for example, with the minimizers, think of a a tortoise or a turtle. When they're feeling threatened, they shut down and withdraw and go into their protective shell to keep themselves safe. We we do it on an emotional level. We shut down and withdraw from our partner in the situation because we don't like intense emotional situations. It's painful for us to be in that space. Whereas a maximizer is the opposite. When there's no connection, when they feel their partner shutting down and withdrawing, they keep attacking, or it feels like attacking, to get the connection back. In other words, get a reaction and a response from their partner. Mm. Uh, WhatsApp says, in my childhood, my mother would fight with my father and stop talking to him for weeks and months. (laughs) No matter how hard my father tried to restore the relationship. As an adult now, I struggle with being extremely emotional. Is there a link, this person asks? Yes, absolutely. Um, We learn from our parents how to deal with conflict and emotional situations. We see how our parents deal with it, and that's where we learn it from, our skills. And we adapt and modify our behavior throughout our childhood um, into our adulthood, and it plays out in our adult relationships. 
Yeah. Paula, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll put this up as a podcast. We're getting requests that uh, from, from our listeners saying, can we have this to listen back to, maybe even forward to the other person? <laughs> thank you, Paula. You're welcome. Have a good day to you and the listeners. Thanks. That's relationship expert Paula Quincy. In the last 24 hours, what's happened in your world? The Nigerian government is under pressure this morning to take.